Whether you have a full-sized Showtime rotisserie and barbecue oven or one of the smaller compact units, your optional accessories and features may vary a bit, but this instructional video applies to all models. The Platinum Digital Full-Size Model, the Black Jog Dial Timer Model, the popular full-size model from Ron's TV show, and the newer Showtime rotisseries, the smaller ones, the Compact Plus and the Junior Showtime. Good Housekeeping Magazine tested Showtime and reported, the product is well designed and easy to use, and they gave it nine stars out of 10. Congratulations on having the finest rotisserie ever made. These were created by the American inventor, Ron Popeil. Ron was recently recognized as one of the 25 most influential people who has changed the way we eat, cook, and think about food. Use your rotisserie and make delicious chickens, ducks, pork roast, hamburgers, veal chops, salmon steaks, fresh trout, teriyaki kebabs, leg of lamb, vegetable baskets, chicken wings, turkey, Cornish game hens, sausages, country rotisserie ham, chicken cordon bleu, and one of Ron's favorites, baby back ribs. This is the unit assembled. The glass door is pulled down by the knobs on the top. Put it in the under position when you're loading food and unloading food. This is the drip tray and grate cover. The spit wheel assembly. And in the back behind the heating element is a heat reflector. It easily comes out and you'd want to wash this once in a while. Just be sure it's always in the unit when the unit is in operation. To replace it, put it in behind the heating coil very simply, let it fall into place. While the heat reflector is always necessary in the full-size Showtime units, it is not necessary and it is not included with the smaller units, such as the Compact Plus and the Junior. This is the spit wheel assembly. It goes in and first into a rest area and then back into one of the cooking areas, A or B. The grate cover goes on top of the drip tray. They can go in either way, as shown here. Again, never operate the unit without the drip tray and the grate cover in place. To attach the door on the front, first put the pin in the right side, then gently lift up and insert the pin in the left side and let it down. That's all you do to put the door in place. It easily removes for cleaning. Now it's your turn, Ron. You tell them about the spit wheel assembly. This is the spit loading base that comes with every unit. I'm going to set that on there like so, and I'm going to take the other gear wheel, and I'm just going to match it up. Once they're matched up, you press down and it's ready to go into the rest area. Now let me explain some of the inner parts of the machine here. Over here is the rest area, over here is the A position, and then we have the B position. Now, and in the back, we can see the motor gear. That's what makes everything operate. Now let's go back to the A position. The A position, and I'm going to set it first in the rest area, and then into the A position. All foods work in that A position. Now it's basically for larger foods because if you decide to go to the B position, you lift up, it falls into place, and that will do smaller foods. I'll do that once again. The A position 
does large foods. The B position does smaller foods. There are only two positions in the smaller units, the rest area and the cooking position. Once the food is in, you lift the window up, you set it, and you forget it. Don't take set it and forget it literally. It's only valid if you have read and followed all the instructional material. Notice that we have half hour increments going around the unit. It's a three hour timer and it turns off automatically. Now you'll notice down the bottom here, it's in the normal rotation. That's right in the middle. That's the heat on and the rotisserie is spinning. If I move it to pause to sear, that allows the heat to stay on, but the rotisserie is not working. It sears all your foods. Of course, if you move it over to no heat rotation, your food is done already, and you turn it to no heat rotation for just five minutes on the timer. That's when the heat is off, but the rotation continues. That'll allow you to let your food rest with all the juices permeating, marinating inside and outside. We'll go back to the normal position. If you own the Platinum Edition with digital controls, it simply works like this. Now we have the hour button right here. I'm gonna to touch it and we have one hour and you can see the digital light right there and it will start in just a couple of seconds time. Above it is the minute button and I will give that a press a couple times and you can add on your minutes. The left side is minus minutes and we can take away minutes if we so desire. And of course, we have the off button down over here. That turns it off. Although your machine stops automatically when you're using it. If I wanted to just touch the button again, you will notice that the rotisserie spins a little bit each time I touch it. So you can position anything in there anywhere you want. Now the function button on the top allows you to do the normal rotation. That's heat with the rotation. Of course, I'm going to go to no heat rotation over here. And I'm going to give it uh, a couple of minutes on no heat rotation. Now what is no heat rotation? No heat rotation is what it says. There's no heat, but the rotisserie is spinning around. Now the reason I invented that was that I know that when food is done, not everyone is ready to sit down at the table. And so this will keep your food spinning around with the juices flowing, and it'll keep it hot for about a half an hour's time. You never can get those people to sit down at the table when you want them to. And the last button on the side over here is pause to sear. And I'm gonna to touch the function button again. And what'll happen here now is the rotisserie stops but the heat remains on. It will allow you to sear your food, especially when you're doing steaks and lamb chops in the basket. I'll turn it off, and that's all there is to it. If your Showtime machine came with a jog dial timer, it may have some or all of the following features. Unless you have selected another function, the timer automatically goes to normal rotation. You can adjust the cooking time by turning the jog dial up or down. The time appears in large red digital numbers. The three-way button lets you select the following. Normal rotation, where your food rotates and is cooked, or no heat rotation, used for cooling the food before serving while keeping the juices evenly distributed throughout the food, or pause to sear. You position the food in a basket or on the spit rods right in front of, that is, facing the heating element to brown or char the outside. Do one side, reposition the basket or spit rods, and do the other side. Do not try to cook food solely in the pause to sear selection. It will burn. Use it for a few minutes on each side to char the outside of steaks and other foods. Then select normal rotation and set the time to finish cooking. If the machine is accidentally turned off, the three-way selection button has one minute of built-in memory. After one minute, it reverts to normal rotation. The warming feature automatically sets one hour of warming when you push the warm button. 
You can increase or decrease the warming time by turning the jog dial just after you select the warming button. You can set the warm selection while your food is cooking too. Just push the warm button and as the light flashes, jog dial the warming time you desire if it is other than the one hour automatic setting. You did not interrupt your cooking time to set the warming time. Your food will continue to cook and after a few seconds, the timer will again show you the remaining cooking time. Then when cooking is done, it will automatically go to your preset warming time. Note the numbers and orange light both flash during warming. A special position feature. To align the food in front of the heating element or to align it for easy removal from the rotisserie, hold down the off button. This lets you rotate the spit rod assembly without heat or engaging any other feature. Release the off button and it stops rotating. The smaller models have a two hour timer with some or all of the same functions. And here's a helpful hint with the smaller models. You can put a strip of aluminum foil just below the front door on your countertop. It'll collect any moisture or grease, especially from larger foods. Now let me show you how to put the meat on the spit rods. I'm going to take the meat. I'm going to set that on the platform like that. And I'm just going to drive it through like so. Beautiful. I'll put this on one side and then the other side, snap it down, and then I'll go right into the rest area. And then I'll just slide it over. Next item is just slide it back, and it's ready. Pick it up, set it, turn it on, forget it. And now Ron's gonna show us an easy way to tie chickens. You get a bunch of food ties with your machine. Cut that off. Over here I have one wrap around, and over here I have the second wrap around. Now, Jan, I'd like to show the folks how to tie a chicken another way using only one tie. I'm going to take a tie here, and I'm just going to make it a little smaller just by making a little knot in here like so, and trimming it like that. Now the first thing I do here with the chicken is always turn the chicken over on the breast with the wings away from you. I'm going to take that chicken tie and I'm going to wrap it around one wing and then the other way. Give it a twist and it locks the legs in. Once the legs are locked in, I'll turn it back over again and I will put one wing on this side and one wing on the other side. Back over again with the breast on the right side. I'm going to grab my rotisserie rods here and I'm just going to grab the legs with my other hands, keep them together, and I'm just going to angle it down like so and slide it through. Set it on the platform over here like this. Put the uh, top gear wheel in place. I'll match it up, snap it down, and I will then put it in the rest area. I will center the chicken, slide it back, bring the window up, set it. It is highly unlikely, but if you should see or smell smoke, it's because the food is rubbing against the heating element. This indicates that the meat or poultry is too big or wasn't tied properly, or the food is off-center, lopsided on the spit rods. If this occurs, turn off and unplug your machine. Do not open the glass door. Let it cool down. Then trim or retie your food tightly. And be sure that the food is centered on the spit rod so it always rotates without touching the heating element. Over here I have the spit loading base. I'm going to take the spit rod assembly and just place it right on like so. I'll take the two chai chickens here and all I'll do is drop it on like that. And I'll take the second one and basically do the same thing. Take this and slip it on like one side.
and then the other. Snap it down. I'll move this over like so, get this out of the way, slide the chickens over, and I'll take a little of this and just sprinkle that on there. That nice. That's going to be a really beautiful. Then I will take it and set it in the rest area, slide it back into the position, lift up the window, turn it on, set it, and forget it. Here I have the basket, and of course I have the lid over here. I have four different salmon steaks here. I'm going to take and place one over here and one on this side, and I'll just mesh it in and just slide it over. I'll do this side over here like so. This is pretty darn simple. A child can do it. I have some lemon, and I'll touch that over here, both sides. Sprinkle a little dill on here. Kind of looks kind of nice, doesn't it? Mm-hmm, I think so. And I'll take the bar over here and I'm just going to stick it in one side. And it's very important that the fish does not move around on the inside. Now, over here, I'm going to uh, take my platform and I'll set the unit on like so. Take this over here and uh, just match it up. Match it on one side and then the other side and just slide it down like so. It's as simple as that. I'll put the lid on. This is pretty simple. Snap it on. Take it. Set it in the rest area. Slide it back. Lift this up. Set it. And forget it. That's all you need to do your work. Yeah. You get this and this, and this and this, or you have this ring matching up with this ring, and this over here matching up with this over here. Okay. This side over here will go in there, and you use the spring side over here, and it comes out over here, and that kind of locks the food down. Over here I've got the platform, I'll set it down, and I'll put this on it like so. Now over here we have these two. Of course, this guy here matches up with that one over there. All I'm going to do is set it down like so, and down it comes. Perfect. I take the lid, and I'll just slip the lid on like this, and you're ready to go. Important. Always close the basket cover tightly so food cannot move while rotating. Problem. Sometimes the edges of food get burned in the baskets as they go around. Solution? Cut small strips of aluminum foil, fold them in half, and cover the leading edges of the basket. As you see here, you can line both of the top and bottom edge with foil. And this will help keep the food from getting burned as it goes around. Here we're loading chicken wings covered with Ron's barbecue spies. And it's a good idea to load food so the smaller bones go toward the middle of the basket so they have less opportunity to fall out the edges. Looks like this is going to hold about 10 chicken wings. Now when you put the basket on, you have to puncture the foil with the end of the basket. You see, you push it down and then snap the top into place through the foil. To load the basket onto the spit rod, there are two loops at either end. You run the spit rods through the loops in the front and the back on both the top and bottom. Then you snap the lid in place. Now, here's how to make kebabs. First thing you do is set it in the rest area like so. Now, with every package you get all these shish kebab rods. Let me show you how to use them. You take the shish kebab, and they're done over here. You just slip in one side on that side, and then use the spring to, in fact, snaps in. It's as simple as that. I'll put it on one side like that, and then just spring it in. You set it back into the unit. You set the window up. You turn it on. 
And that's all you do to do shish kebabs. Remember with kebabs, you always put the spring end on the right side because it turns a quarter turn every time the whole wheel assembly goes around. This ensures an even cooking on all sides of your kebabs. Insert the sharp end first, then snap the spring end in place. Keep the meat and vegetables on your kebab rods no more than an inch and a half in diameter so they don't touch each other as they go around. It's very important when you're fixing ribs using the kebab rods that you put the spring ends on the left that way they don't make a quarter turn every time it goes around. And here's how to use the flavor injector. Mm -hmm. Suck up that juice, like a little lemon juice here. And I'll take this and I'll jam it in. Just a little shot there. Stick a little shot over in here. Put a little shot down in here. A little shot in there. Use it all up. Huh? Then I'll just go to the spit rod over here slide this in and all I do is go down and just ram it through like this. I'll set it on the counter over here like that. I'll put the uh, fine thing on over here, snap it down and lift it, set it in, position it, slide it back. It's as simple as that and then you just set it and prepare it. And now, Ron shows how to tie a turkey. Now, over here, I've tied the wings one time, and I've also tied the wings. This keeps the wings nice and tight and close. Of course, you have to also tie the legs, and you just use a regular uh, square knot, which I'll use over here, and we'll tie it really good. Always use four strings when tying a turkey. Two on the wings and two on the legs. If your turkey comes with a metal leg clip, you can use that too. Just undo one leg to thoroughly clean the turkey inside first. Then replace the leg in the clip. I'll clip the excess off like so. Next I'm going to turn it sideways and over here I'm just going to slide it down and all the way through. I'll set my platform on it over here like this, okay? And there's my spit rod coming out and I'll just uh, lock it in lift it up and put it in the machine like this, slide it back, set the window up, turn it on, set it and forget it. And now Ron shows us how to make baby back ribs using the kebab rods. Note, the spring end is on the left, not the right with the baby back ribs. Now, it's important that this side be on the left side and the right be on this side over here. So I'm just going to slide it in over here like so, and then I'll just squeeze these together, snap that in. Now, if you notice down over here, we have our ribs, and I've taken one on each side. It holds it like that. Now, it's going to take this side over here, and I'm just going to slip it in on one side and spring it on the other, and just roll it like so and just slip it in over here take it and slide it back and now while that's doing that I'll barbecue it have rubberized gloves. I'm going to slip my glove on over here. And uh, I want you to know, though, you can use any kind of gloves that you may have in your house. And by the way, these gloves are, in fact, rubberized. Watch what I do here. I'm going to turn off my machine over here, and I'm going to slide this right under. The first thing I'm going to do is lift up and just take it out. It's as simple as that. Now, over here, I have my meat thermometer. 
you must check to see if in fact the meat is done. It's done, good. I'll take the meat thermometer out and just slide it off. The chicken comes right off and you are now ready to serve your chicken. Problem, your chicken is done for time and temperature. However, the breast of the chicken is not as brown as you'd like it. The chicken has probably been loaded a bit off center. So, stop it when the breast is aligned in front of the heating element. And set the function switch to pause to sear. Set the timer for five minutes and you'll find the chicken breast is nicely browned. Now here I have a piece of, beautiful piece of rose spray and I'm gonna just uh, sprinkle some nice stuff on here all over. Get some nice good spices on there. That's gonna be lovely, huh? That pretty? I think so. Okay, now, since I have it like that, I'm gonna take the spit rod over here and do not go in over here in the meat. That's beautiful meat. You don't want to do that. What you basically want to do, folks, is go in through this way. And so I'm just going to slide it through like so, and I'll just push it right through like that. I'll set it on the wheel like so. I'll put this on over here. It'll match up. I'll put it in the rest area. Slide it in the middle. Push it in the back, raise up the lid, set it, and forget it. Here we have a nine pound standing rib roast. It's been in for well over a couple hours now, and it's just running smoothly. It's very important that, as you see, the bones on the left be on the left side and not on the right side so they could possibly hit the gear which causes everything uh, here to work. Problem. You can see or smell smoke. Because the food is hitting or coming too close to the heating element. If you don't center the food properly, or load it properly, or trim off the excess fat, or if your food is too large, this could happen. Here's an example of a roast that was not loaded properly onto the spit rods. It catches on the heating element and burns. Always check on your food from time to time. If you hear a squeak as the machine goes around, put a drop or two of vegetable oil or olive oil on the gear wheel nub before inserting the spit rod assembly into the machine. Or use the end of a kebab rod dipped in oil and drop it onto the nub like this as the machine turns. Or you can even use a straw. But be careful if you do it when the machine is turning. These parts get very hot. Discoloration. Some discoloration over time is to be expected when you work with hot food. It's normal and it will not affect the function of the machine. On white machines, it gets slightly browner on the front of the machine behind the glass door and sometimes on the steaming and heating tray. This is caused mostly by fat from roast beef. While it is not recommended, you can, after a while, if you want, return your machine for a nominal fee. The factory will refinish the surface for you. Ask customer service. You can line the bottom of your drip tray with a small sheet of aluminum foil. Be sure it's flat against the bottom to leave room for fat that drips off the food. You can't have any fat or grease build up on the grate cover, so please don't cover that with aluminum foil. It's made to drain the fat away down into the drip tray. On top of the unit, you can have the optional steaming and heating tray. When you open the top to check on your food, be sure to tip the tray lid so any moisture falls back onto the food and not onto the counter or the machine, like this, and like this. When steaming fresh vegetables or frozen vegetables, we put a half cup water on each side of the bottom tray and then put the steaming partition on that. Here we have some beautiful beans and succotash. That'll be sensational. And by the way, as you can see, you can just put it on the top here. It stays on the top and comes out beautiful. 
And Ron, let's show the folks another feature on some models. There's a tie latch on the side. Use one of the elastic food ties, tie a knot about one inch down, and slip it on the arrow-shaped piece here on the side, and then over the door handle. It helps hold the door in place when storing or moving it. But remember, always let the machine cool down before moving it. There are several accessories for your rotisserie and barbecue. Shown here is the giant vegetable and lobster basket. Here is the giant vegetable and lobster basket shown with two very large lobster tails and sea bass fillet. And then we have the speed basket. It fits in the forward position near the heating element. Great for steaks. Sears them well and keeps them juicy inside. Call the number on the screen to order. Here's a new invention from Ron Popeil. It's a chili stew and soup pot. It fits right on top of your Showtime machine. You can use the same lid that came with your steaming and heating tray and heat all kinds of chili, stew, soup. There's a two and a half quart size and a four quart size. Ask the order desk about them. And here's another great idea from Ron Popeil. It's the round rib basket, designed solely to do all kinds of ribs, baby back ribs, spare ribs, and it has patent pending rib hooks. You just slip them in the rib and attach them to the basket. It is guaranteed easy to use. Ask about this, too, for the best ribs you've ever had. And I think Ron's new barbecue sauce recipe is about ready. So when you call, get some barbecue sauce to go with these rib baskets. And Ron has developed three new char rubs. They bring that real outdoor charcoal flavor right into your kitchen. Using the finest seasonings, you can make the finest food. This three-pack of char rubs includes Ron's original Chicago Steakhouse formula for steaks and roasts, Ron's barbecue char rub for chickens and turkey and hens and kebabs, and Ron's citrus char rub for seafood, fish, lobsters. Try all three. And now here are some cautions. Things to avoid when using your rotisserie and barbecue. Do not touch the glass on the top or the bottom. It's hot. When the glass is underneath, do not touch this. This is very, very hot. Don't touch the top. Don't touch the back. Always very hot. Never use spray. Never you spray inside the machine. Don't touch this. This is very, very hot, okay? Never grab that. You'll burn yourself. Never touch the sides over here. This is important. Remember, Always keep at least eight inches of space from any cabinet on the top, sides, and back. This is no. You're too close on this side, and you're too close up here. This is no. Hot. 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 Do not touch. Important. Keep out of the reach of children at all times. Don't let them reach up and touch it. Important, do not put charcoals or any foreign objects in the machine. Important, do not move rotisserie when it's hot or loaded with food.
congratulations on having a Showtime rotisserie and barbecue. This is the finest rotisserie ever made. And here's a collection of recipes and menu ideas. The spices used in this recipe collection, for the most part, are designed only to enhance natural flavors, not cover them. Before the advent of grocery stores and readily available fresh foods, herbs and spices were often used to mask a questionable taste or smell. Spices were also used to help preserve foods. But with the rotisserie, this isn't necessary. Food just seems to taste better. And remember, when you use a rotisserie, you can really cut the fat. There are different features and optional accessories with every model, such as the steaming tray that rests on the top while the unit is running, different kebab rods, gloves, and some of the larger and smaller baskets are optional. of recipes, we're even going to show you how to make stuffed mushrooms. But first, the steaming and heating tray goes on top of the rotisserie. Put a half cup of water in each side of the bottom tray, and then place the steaming insert on top of that. You can use frozen vegetables or fresh vegetables in this. All you do is put the food in, just pour it in, and put the lid on and place it on top of the rotisserie. Leave it on top for 15 to 30 minutes or even an hour for denser foods. Now here are the kebab rods. We're showing you the kind here with a little star gear on one end. This little star gear goes on the right side when you're making kebabs and it goes on the left side when you're making ribs. The star gear turns the kebabs a quarter turn each time the big wheel goes around. It locks in place with a firm snap. And you load it in the rest position and you unload it in the rest position. When taking them out using gloves, you push in where the star gear is with your finger and it releases it. Always use caution because these can be very hot. Many of our recipes call for olive oil. In our test kitchens, we found Bertoli to be of consistent good quality. For the rotisserie, you'll want to use the lighter oils. They have a higher smoke point, less likely to burn. The richer virgin olive oil is better with vegetables in the steaming and heating tray. While you're going to see a variety of recipe ideas, don't forget the rotisserie chicken. It's a great menu idea and no seasoning is necessary. When we talk about rubs, we're talking about rubbing herbs and spices into the meat. With the chicken, you won't use any oil. Just rub it in and rotisserie it. The same thing with beef. You can use fresh herbs or you can use dried herbs. If the food dehydrator, if you have a food dehydrator, you can grow your favorite herbs and spices and preserve them throughout the winter. The flavor cooks into the meat. And here, don't forget to always tighten the basket lid, no matter which basket you use. You don't want the food to slip around while it's rotating. And you can steam bread on the top. We'll show you more about this. And here's some recipes. Chicken with herb rub. You'll rub herbs into the skin of the chicken. It's very simple. We've taken a tablespoon of rosemary and a tablespoon of oregano. So we just rub it into the chicken skin all over, pat it down, and put it on the rotisserie. 
We'll use the spit. This is a three and a half pound chicken and it will take about an hour. Look at the side of your unit for cooking time. the fat comes off the chicken as it rotates. This is a more healthful way to cook. The herbs give it a unique flavor. If you have a large vegetable and lobster basket, it will hold four or five large turkey legs. Just wash them, put them in the basket, and put the basket on the rotisserie. That's it. Serve them when they're brown, about 40 minutes. Now here are sage chicken kebabs. We marinated the chicken for half an hour in a quarter cup olive oil, one tablespoon sage, and ground pepper. Then we put it on the kebabs with fresh vegetables from the garden. Cooks in about 22 minutes. It can be a main course for four people. A delicious way to serve chicken and get your daily vegetables. Here are three game hens served with raspberry sauce. The three hens were cooked side by side on the spit. No preparation was needed other than tying the feet. Then you just put them on the spit and cook them. 40 minutes. Of course, the size of the game hens will determine how long you cook them. And you can serve them with a lot of different side dishes, rice, potatoes, a salad. Here we show them with raspberry sauce. And the rolls were heated in the steaming tray just before serving. The recipe for the raspberry sauce follows. Combine the water, apple, salt, sugar, and lemon juice and gently bring to a low simmer. And then you sift the flour in so it doesn't form lumps in the mix. Simmer until thick, about 10 minutes. When it's done, remove it from the heat, stir in a cup of fresh raspberries, and let it stand for 10 minutes. Lime pepper chicken breast. The recipe will follow, but here's how it's made. Take a third cup Bertoli olive oil, coarse salt, black pepper, fresh garlic, and cayenne. Mix them together. You're going to make a rub for the chicken breast. Mix it all together and take one lime for six chicken breasts. Stir it all together and rub it into the chicken. Now this is the flat, standard basket. Be sure to put the chicken only one layer deep. This way they'll brown on both sides. And it's really important you put the lid down tight, very tight. You don't want them to slip around while they're rotating. And that's it. On the rotisserie for about 30 minutes. And if you have the pause to sear feature, where you can stop the basket in front of the heater, do that for three to four minutes on the side and they'll brown quicker. And always use a non-stick spatula, because these are non-stick baskets and you don't want to knock the finish off of them. Now here's the recipe. Mm -hmm. 
Major drumsticks. These are chicken legs that we've rolled in a mixture of a half cup breadcrumbs, one teaspoon paprika, one teaspoon red pepper, one teaspoon black pepper, and a half teaspoon of salt. We roll them in the mixture, place them in the flat basket on the rotisserie for 25 minutes. Great snack. Make a bunch of these and send the kids on a picnic. Barbecue chicken is a lot like barbecue turkey. There's no extra prep. But in the last uh, 30 minutes that it's on the spit, open the door and gently, with a long brush, brush the chicken with barbecue sauce. It'll form a glaze that will brown faster. It could burn if you put it on too soon. So we say the last 20 or maybe 30 minutes. And then serve it with a little barbecue sauce for dipping. And while this was cooking, we put corn on the cob on top so the whole dinner was prepared at once. And you'll find a recipe for barbecue sauce at the end of the video. Teriyaki chicken. Marinated chicken breast and teriyaki sauce. Here's how you do it. You just place the chicken breast and the teriyaki sauce in a Ziploc bag. Put it in the refrigerator for about an hour. Take it out and place them in that flat basket for about 35 minutes in the rotisserie. And when it's finished, serve it with soy sauce and pineapple. And the recipe for the marinade follows. It's also at the end of the vegetable section. Now, if you're going to marinate food for more than 30 minutes, put it in the refrigerator. To keep foods fresh, always keep it either hot or cold. Chicken breast chardonnay with Anaheim peppers. This can be a very spicy dish. Depends on how much red pepper you add. But the Anaheim peppers are very mild, and the ones we cooked with the chicken, we sliced and seeded first. And then we just put them right on top of the chicken in the basket. The chicken was marinated in a cup of Chardonnay wine with a teaspoon of red pepper and a half teaspoon of onion salt, and of course salt and pepper to taste. We served it with a warm black bean and corn salsa that was heated on top. You'll find the recipe for the salsa in the vegetable section. Turkey franks and chili. Just place the franks on the kebab rods for about 12 to 15 minutes, depending on how brown you want them. And heat the chili and beans on top of the machine in the heating tray. Now these are turkey dogs and turkey chili, but you can use it with beef. As you can see, each kebab turns a quarter turn as the large wheel goes around. That's why you put the spit rods in the other way when you're making ribs. You don't want them to turn when you're making ribs, but you do with kebabs and hot dogs. It browns them just like you're over a campfire. Okay, turkey breast. There's very little prep to doing a turkey breast. Wash it and put it in the basket. And that's it. Succulent and juicy and so easy. It's a great Sunday dinner. As you can see, it goes in the large vegetable and lobster basket. This is a five pound turkey breast. What an easy meal. And we served it with cranberry sauce. You can make sandwiches, have it fresh, serve it with a salad.
Now we've taken half a chicken and we're rubbing it with two tablespoons of oregano. You can cut the chickens in half or have the butcher cut them in half for you. You rub the herbs on both sides. We're going to place it in the large vegetable and lobster basket. That's it. This is a great idea when a full chicken is too much. And while the chicken's cooking, here's a wonderful side dish. We took two leaves of fresh basil, cherry tomatoes, and they were halved, hearts of palm, cut to about an inch long, olive oil, balsamic vinegar, and a little salt and pepper. Add those ingredients together and stir them and let them set for a few minutes while the chicken's cooking. And don't forget to use gloves when you're taking food out of the basket. You could also barbecue a half chicken. In that case, we apply the barbecue sauce before we put it in the basket. The whole chicken cooks in about 35 minutes. And don't forget the plain rotisserie chicken. You don't need herbs, spices, anything. It makes a great meal. Very easy to prepare. Leg of lamb. Here we have rosemary leg of lamb, and it was made by rubbing rosemary and salt into the meat. In this case, we use dehydrated rosemary. You can use fresh if you can find it. And you place the whole leg of lamb on the spit. This one is just under six pounds. And after we rubbed it and put it on the spit, it cooked in under two hours. Mediterranean lamb chops. And these are shown served with a combination of olives and a salad topped with feta cheese. And to make these delicious chops, cook them in the flat basket. Make sure the lid's tight. And you can make up to 20 in one basket. But we made six with this recipe. Sausage and red cabbage. Sausages are really easy. By cooking them in the rotisserie, it allows you to cook them without having fat or oil. You can cook them on the kebab rods, but if you have the flat basket, and if your machine has that pause to sear feature on the switch, you'll love to prepare them this way. Just place them in the basket, tighten the lid, that's it. Now, while they're rotating, you want to pause them in front of the heating element for five minutes on each side. That browns them. And then continue rotating them for another 10 to 12 minutes. And they're shown here served with a red cabbage slaw. It's a complete meal. We made the cabbage on top and the heating and steaming tray. Oh yeah, sausages make a great breakfast too. And here's the recipe for the red cabbage slaw. Take a third head of red cabbage and shred it or chop it and add the salt, sugar, the red wine vinegar, and a quarter cup olive oil. Mix it all together and place it on both sides of the steaming partition. Remember, a half a cup of water in the bottom. Pineapple glazed ham. Take your flavor injector, if you have one, with your unit, and fill it with pineapple juice. 
and inject the ham throughout. The pineapple juice forms a glaze and a flavoring while it's on the rotisserie. Now this is a fully cooked ham before we started. So it took about 40 minutes and we cooked a lot of the fat out of the ham when we did it. It gives it a unique, delicate flavor. Barbecue pork chops. This is a favorite, especially in the South. And all you do is coat both sides of the pork chops with barbecue sauce and put them in the flat basket. These cooked in 38 minutes. They weren't very thick. And while they were cooking, we put the small corn on the cob on the top. The steaming tray usually has a lid on it, but we took it off so you could see it here. Again, a half a cup of water on each side of the bottom tray. You can heat pork and beans on top, too. Barbecue beef kebabs. We marinated these chunks of beef in barbecue sauce and then put them on the kebab rods and added garden vegetables. Be sure the vegetables and meat are cut small enough where they don't hit the bottom or brush against the heating element. And tomatoes can be kind of tricky. They can become overly done and fall off. But these made it. Rib roast. A beautiful rib roast is no problem. And here we're giving the roast a rub. It's coarse salt and black and white pepper. Black pepper and white pepper are the same thing. They're just picked at different times, and they each have a distinctive different flavor. We rub them into the meat and place it in the rotisserie. And you see we put it on the spit rod sideways. And while it was cooking, we put potatoes in for two hours. These are new potatoes with parsley. And green beans were added during the last 20 minutes. Now we cooked this roast rare. It took about two, two and a half hours. Isn't that beautiful? Now London broil can be difficult, but we marinated it with olive oil, pepper, and salt. And then we placed it in the flat standard basket and cooked it medium rare. And again, you can sear it with a pause to sear feature to help lock in the flavor. Thin slices make a wonderful dinner. Tip can be considered a fairly tough roast. This one was marinated in a Ziploc bag with orange juice and soy sauce in the refrigerator for three hours. And taking it out, we made a rub out of fresh garlic, salt, and pepper. And we rubbed it in. And then we're going to place it in the flat basket. Now notice how some of the ends are smaller. Those are going to cook faster, so you'll have some, you know, an uneven cooking here, but that can be good. The people that want the more well-done meat will eat the ends 
and the thicker portion in the center will be rarer. This one was cooked about 40 minutes in the flat basket. And remember, when you're marinating, more than 30 minutes, refrigerated. Delicious. And the orange juice helps tenderize the meat. There are a lot of ways to fix burgers and onions. And we wanted to mention that if you put the onion and the burger in the basket together, as are shown here, the flavor of the onion cooks into the burger. And you can do it with a nice steak, too. Now here's the steak we cooked that way. And we made the cheese toast on top in the steaming tray and just served it with a fresh salad. And while we're in the section on beef, we wanted to remind you about beef dogs and chili. Put the hot dogs on the kebab rods, warm your chili up on top, that's it. Just a reminder. Salmon steaks are a favorite. Here we prepared them with dill and fresh lemon slices. We brushed on a little olive oil. That just helps seal in the flavor and keeps the fish from drying out. We added a lemon slice behind each one. and we put the dill on the top. Now this is fresh dill. Again, you could use dry dill. It's that simple to have gourmet salmon steak. And if you have the feature, it's a good idea to sear them for three to four minutes on each side. That's the pause to sear feature. Now use gloves, taking them out, and serve them right away. Again, this is a non-stick basket, so use utensils that are made for non-stick coating. Cajun sea bass. You know fish varies, and fish can get dry, so it's a good idea to brush on a little oil when you're putting it in the rotisserie, just a little bit. And in this case, the oil is going to help the spice adhere to the fish. This is cayenne pepper mixed with paprika. It gives it a nice, lively flavor. This will cook for 22 minutes in the flat basket. And you really wouldn't want it much thicker than this. You want it to brown on both sides. Again, be sure the top is tight. 22 minutes. And serve it with a fresh lemon and lime. This is a really helpful cooking.
shrimp kebab. They're made just like any other kebab. You can use uncooked shrimp or you could use cooked shrimp and brush your favorite teriyaki sauce on it or serve it plain. Just don't forget to make kebabs with shrimp. Lobster isn't hard at all to fix. We're going to show you lobster with spice curry glaze. But first, cut the back and open it up. Cut the extra bits off the bottom side and discard them. Lightly brush them with oil. And we're going to use the large vegetable and lobster basket to cook them in. They cook very fast, 10, 12, 14 minutes, depending on the size of lobster and whether or not you use the pause to sear feature. These were just rotated normally for 12 to 14 minutes. They need to be served immediately. So we started the side dishes before we started the lobster. Again, use the gloves. They're going to be hot. Now here they're shown with portobello mushrooms, rice, and a spice curry glaze. A little paprika was added for coloring and a slight flavor to the lobster in this dish. Here's the recipe for the curry glaze. Carefully combine the ingredients while they're cold. Stir them and simmer them. That's it. Now the portobello mushrooms were sliced and laid in the steaming tray. There's water underneath. It's already there. And we're going to brush them with oil, garlic, and balsamic vinegar. Now these were on, on the top, when the lobsters went in. And to hasten their cooking, we actually use hot water in the bottom tray here. A little salt, balsamic vinegar, just brush it on. it's trout or bass, fish do great in the rotisserie. Here we've taken some fresh trout, put a lemon inside, and place them in the flat basket. This is the standard flat basket that comes with the rotisserie. And that's all the prep you do. Just, again, make sure the lid is tight. You don't want them slipping around. If they slipped around, they might tear up the skin and look pretty unattractive when they came out. Again, it's a healthful way to cook. No grease, no oil. Just delicious fish. Ahi tuna steak. This is a really fine cut of fish. It's often served raw as sushi or sashimi. Very lightly brush against the grain with oil. Now we're going to use the small speed basket so you can sear the tuna steak and keep the center rare. Sear it for three minutes on each side, and then you'll rotate it for four minutes.
The small speed basket, remember, goes in the B position, the position closest to the heating element. And here it is coming out, ready to thinly slice. And we're serving it with Japanese horseradish, soy sauce, sesame seeds, and hot mustard. vegetables were brushed with oil and summer savory. Summer savory just seems to bring out the delicate flavor of vegetables. And the oil helps keep them from drying out while they're rotating and locks in the natural flavor. Use any combination of fresh vegetables. Use what you have in your garden. cheese bread on top in the steamer. You don't have to leave it in too long. Just melt the cheese and take it out. It's cheese, garlic, butter, and sourdough French bread. That's it. Asparagus does very well in the steaming heating tray. Don't leave it in too long. Place the asparagus spears in the top for about seven to eight minutes. Then add some cheese and red bell pepper for another seven to eight minutes. Spinach Florentine. Combine about three cups of fresh chopped spinach, ricotta cheese, olive oil, salt, and place it in the steamer, about 15 minutes. The peppers, about the same time. And these uh, peppers have been brushed with a little oil. Here's the recipe. And here's an all-time favorite for appetizers. These are stuffed mushrooms. And you can prepare them on top in the steamer. And that's slow steaming. And you can do it without butter. So add the ingredients in a small bowl and mix it up. Wash the mushrooms and pull the stems out. That's all there is to it. The recipe follows. This is some uh, grated cheese, Parmesan cheese, garlic, oil, breadcrumbs, and you just mix them all together in a bowl. You can use butter, but here we're using olive oil, and the steaming keeps everything moist. You'll need some salt, too. And you load them by spoonful. And on medium-sized mushrooms, you can put about nine on each side of the steaming tray. Again, there's a half a cup of water below them on each side. Cover them. About 15 minutes. Some fresh Italian parsley was added just before they were finished. And serve them. Here's a quick dish that can dazzle your family. Snow peas with peanuts, also called china peas. Take a couple handfuls of peas, 
a little bit of olive oil, steam them for about seven minutes in the steamer, add peanuts and serve. We used one tablespoon of olive oil for two handfuls of snow peas. Fresh garden slaw. This is in the collection of recipes because it goes so well with everything you do in a rotisserie. It's naturally healthful and nutritious, and this light salad doesn't detract from the flavors of the meat or the fish or the kebab. Here you have red cabbage, broccoli, a piece of uh, bell pepper, celery, zucchini, carrot, and cauliflower. Grate it or shred it in the food processor. That's it. Now remember, when you're steaming foods on top of the rotisserie, this is a slow steamer. Dense foods like carrots take a lot longer to steam than light, delicate foods like uh, broccoli. So start with the carrots, and in this case, the carrots will take about 40 to 45 minutes to steam. The broccoli will take about 15 minutes. So 15 minutes before your food is done, add the broccoli. Remember to always have a half cup of water in each side. And be careful when you take the lid off, you don't want the steam to get in your face. Yams. Yams are also a dense food and take a long time to steam. Allow about uh, an hour and 15 minutes and check them with a fork for tenderness. Okay, these are candied yams and the coating will help make them sweet and keep some moisture in. You may have to add a little bit more uh, water to the bottom of the tray if they become too dry. Serve them with pineapple and pecan. And here's the recipe. Black bean and corn hot salsa. This is the one you saw served with the uh, chicken breast chardonnay earlier. And it's one cup of cooked black beans, one half cup sweet corn, one cup diced bell peppers, two teaspoons lime juice, two whole jalapeno peppers, two tomatoes diced, and one tablespoon of cilantro, also known as coriander. Mix these ingredients together and put them in the top on the steaming tray until they're very warm and serve immediately. It's a good side dish for a rotisserie chicken. Teriyaki vegetables. We marinate them in a Ziploc bag and fill the bag with teriyaki sauce and added the vegetables about half an hour. And be sure you use chunks that are large enough they're not going to fall through the basket as it turns. And keep the basket tight. Keep the lid tight. And again, you don't want it too thick because you want the vegetables to brown on both sides. These are rotated for about 30 minutes. And here's that recipe for sweet and sour cabbage slaw. It goes well with poultry, beef, and pork. And we steam it in the top for about 15 to 20 minutes. But you could even serve this uh, without steaming at all. It's a nice side dish.
Corn on the cob is a favorite summer vegetable. You've seen it in the recipes in this video a couple of times, and these are the longer ones. There's six on top. And here are the shorter ones. Fresh corn is ready to eat in about 15 minutes. Here's a recipe for teriyaki sauce. your ingredients for barbecue sauce. Simmer all the ingredients in a covered saucepan for about an hour. Add water if the mixture becomes too thick. 